Esteline, my name is Emeline and you're watching ETA to Z on Arts TV. Have you ever heard of Gabi? It's a very comfy blanket that almost every Ethiopian has at home. The Gabi showcases the traditional skills and knowledge of the country's craftsmen and women. Today, I'm at the Trio Craft Workshop and I'm going to try and learn how to weave with one expert. Let's go! My work is going very well. The work's pretty hard, right? Oh, you have that? It's a bit hard, but it's still manageable. Abara, when did you learn how to weave? I started in 1983. To this day, I'm still doing the same work. How old were you back then? I was 22 years old when I started. I thought that weavers were being taught how to weave at a very young age. Yes, I started weaving a bit late. Usually they start at 17 or 18 or 19 or sometimes even at 12 depending on how quickly they learn. It depends on how quickly they learn. There are some that are gifted. Does that mean that children won't go to school? They do. They learn weaving in their spare time. They come back from school and practice with their family members or kids that already know how to weave. Since we want to show the world how we weave, our parents teach us from a very young age. I've always been told that uh, weavers uh, mostly come from southern Ethiopia. Yes, they come from the south. They have knowledge in handcraft. They're very gifted. They have clever minds. They can do things that machines can't. If you bring us a sample of a design, we won't forget it. It's a natural gift. It's the kind of talent you are given by God. We use our God-given abilities to weave. Where do you come from? I come from the South. Usually men are the ones who are weaving, but the cleaning and the spinning of the cotton are women's tasks, basically. The women spin the cotton because they're very good at it. This isn't to make them feel inferior or anything like that. It is because they have the talent for it that they spin and clean the cotton. The men can learn to do the same work, but the women already know how to do it. Some men spin the cotton, and there are some women who weave. These people have more knowledge than most. You can do it too if you learn how. There's nothing you can't learn how to do, as you can see. The women spin the cotton and bring it to the men because they're good at it. Do you know how to spin cotton? If they show me how to do it, then I can. I mostly have time for weaving, but if I had more time, I would like to learn how to spin cotton. It's knowledge after all. Is weaving a hard task to do? It's hard to do when at the same time it's also easy. If you know how to do it, then it's easy. If you don't, then it will be hard for you until you can get used to it. Since it's your work, you have to get used to it. How is the pay? We get paid fairly for the work we do. So it's good. Can you explain to me what you are doing right now? What I'm doing right now is weaving something called Gabi. This one's pretty big, but there are different sizes. Why Gabi is so important? Because we can see people wearing it all the time. I think everyone has a Gabi in their homes. There are a lot of unique handiwork in Ethiopia. And because of that, no other place can make the Gabi or any of our traditional clothing. Ethiopia is known for its many traditional kamis and clothes and the gabi. You won't find such types of clothing anywhere else. Only in Ethiopia. There are various reasons why we make the gabi. We make it because our fathers wear it to attend events. If it's a cold season, you can wear the gabi to stay warm. In specific places, the gabi can be worn by people to show that they are wiser and more important. I usually see elderly men wear the gabi. Ah. <laughs> Wearing gabis. Ah. <laughs> yes, they wear the gabi to be fashionable. And they wear different types of gabi to attend events. When it comes to the weaving process, how different is the process of weaving gabi from uh, the process of weaving netella, for example? 
Gabi mibala u befete li misara no indes. We make gabi from cotton that's already been spun. But in order to make the net ala, we use a different material. This cotton has been spun by our mothers. If it hasn't been spun, then we can't make gabi from mm -hmm. it. Would you say that it is more difficult to weave gabi compared to the other shema, shawls, and net ala? Yes, it's harder to make the gabi. It takes more skill to make it. You need to have a solid knowledge of how to do it. How long does it take to make a, a gabi? It approximately takes one week to finish one gabi. And the sum? One uh, week? Yes. That's a uh, lot of time. It is. I've been told that weavers, uh, as much as other craftsmen, have been ostracized from society. no way. During our grandfather's time, yes. These days it's a well-known and respectable job. People don't try to belittle us. Back then they used to look down on weavers because they were not educated people. Things are different these days. The technology is better as well. It was back in the days that weavers, pottery makers and others used to be ostracized. But now our skills are in demand. So the times now are good to you. These days our skills are very much desired. Back in those days, people looked down on us because they didn't know. But now people know that these skills can be used to show Ethiopian culture to the world. Ahun, they know that uh, you guys are very talented, actually. Mm. Yes, we are. We have the knowledge. This knowledge can be shared with the rest of the world. Back then, they couldn't share it. Back in those days, these skills were only found in specific regions. It's been a long time since people have accepted our skills. If you want to learn, I can show you. Yes, I want to learn how to do it. I want to try. Step on it. Step on it harder. That's better. Okay. Now place this inside. Where is he? Yes, towards me. <laughs> now pull on it towards you. Hold it tightly. Now hit it. Hit it harder. Yes. Okay. Hit it like this. Now we need to place this in there. Otherwise, it won't work. Now switch feet. You see how wide it became? It's wide. <laughs> it's difficult though. It won't be hard once you get used to it. If it's stuck in the middle, then you can move it over here. Pull it out. Okay. Once you pull on it, you're going to have to hit it. Hit it harder. If you don't hit it hard, then it won't become Gabi. You see the opening there? When you hit it hard, it disappears. If you don't hit it hard, then it can't become a Gabi. Step with your left foot and watch closely when I slip it in. Did you step on it hard? You see? Oh. I'm better than you. Oh, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not very good at it. You'll get the hang of it. It's not easy. It's easy for those who already know how to do it. If I taught you how, then it will become easy for you too. <laughs> Come back again. <laughs> oh. We'll work together again one day. Is she? <laughs> I had an amazing time. Thank you so much. It would have been better if you worked on it all day. Sorry, I would have loved to, but I don't have enough time. We are at the Sewa Sewa Design Workshop where the traditional Gabi is being transformed into beautiful and modern everyday outfits. I am with Avlene, who is the founder's son and the general manager of this very promising company. Hi Avlene, and thank you for having us. Hi, thank you for coming. The traditional gabi has many functions, right? People wear it at the church, during the holidays. What is the cultural significance of the gabi? Gabi is that one thing that puts a smile on it. 
any Ethiopian's face because it's such a comforting fabric and I can almost say everyone has it on their bed. And I think it's, it's a kind of a sign of Ethiopian comfort, hospitality and just warmth. We said, why don't we take that fabric that we love and take it out of the bed and wear it all day. <laughs> so that led to hoodies and different jackets, which is, you know, very comfortable. The color is nice and everyone recognizes it. So it's like, ah, oh, Gabi. <laughs> like I said, it puts a smile on your face. Oh, yeah, this but is Gabi. All yeah. the time. <laughs> yes. Do you believe that Ethiopian fashion is valued as highly as it should be uh, in the, um, the global fashion industry? No, I don't think that because uh, it's such an early market and there are so many problems to solve before introducing it to the international market. We need to work on quality, we need to work on scalability of manufacturing, and we need to take that concept of craftsmanship and create a scalable version of it, and which is our long-term goal and why we came up with these new product lines. So I don't think uh, people are aware how, you know, it's such a sustainable version of fashion. Can you explain to me why it is sustainable? So for example, if we take Gabi, which is uh, one of our main fabrics that we use, it doesn't involve any machinery. It's made, it's taken from cotton farms and every process until this point is made with hand. So there's no machinery. Uh, it involves so many women, so many people uh, in the process. I'm very curious now. I really want to learn more about your designs. So can you show us around? Yes, yes, I'll be happy to. What yes. makes your business different? You know, we're not new to traditional clothing and Gabi is not a new thing, but the way we try to construct our products is in a way where it's practical and easy to wear. So for example here, what she's making is this cuff that we call cuff. And we're using the same traditional fabric. And this is kind of a technique that we kind of had to figure out to do. But this is one of the things that makes it practical. Mm -hmm. You know, a jacket needs a cuff, something mm -hmm. that holds something elastic. And it took us a little moment to figure out how to do it, but you know, figured it out and that's what she's doing right now. And we tried to divide the work mm -hmm. uh, between them. And as you can see, those, those patterns are hand-woven yes. pellets, yes. as we made them. Uh, and basically that's what they do. It goes through this process, that line, and then at the end pops up a jacket. This is the toilet. Oh. Yes, we it and we Sorry. sew it on top of the, the, the fabric. The biggest reason we need to be efficient and effective is that in the global market, it's a very competitive industry. And at the end of the day, if we're saying we want to sell our clothes to the international market, we're competing with China, we're competing with big manufacturers, and they have a very scalable version of uh, fashion. And China has already started mimicking some of the Ethiopian designs, right? Yes, exactly. And you know, all the toilets that we use, you can actually find a Chinese version of it. And that's, that's very sad to me. And that's, you know, that's why I push efficiency, effectiveness, and scalability is because at the end of the day, people want to pay less. People want something that's available. So we need to make it- More affordable? More affordable, and then we need to make it more available. Mm. And how we do that is creating a scalable business, something big, not just small traditional shops here and there. No, we need to have a garment that has like 5,000 employees producing Ethiopian garments. And that's the only way that we can compete in the international market and have a chance to have a scalable version of this. So scalability is key. key. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Avelene, for opening your doors to us. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of ETA to Z. See you all next time. This is called Mawarwara. You can't weave without this. It's made from wood. It's used to make gabi, netala, kemis, and other traditional clothes. You can't work without it. Oh. Did you take a good look? 